Today, there are 3,000 electric vehicles in Calgary, and by 2035, uh, that number could rise to 200,000. So I'm going to talk to Jan uh, Jana Mosley, who's the president of NMAX Power, about an electric vehicle smart charging program called ChargeUp. The city of Calgary owned utility is looking for 250 EV owners to participate in the project. So welcome to the interview, Jenna. Thank you, happy to be here. Well, look, why don't we uh, start with just an overview of the project, please? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the second phase of NMAX's smart charging pilot uh, charge up. In our first phase, we worked with um, participants in the city of Calgary just to better understand um, charging behavior for EV owners. And what we learned in that pilot is that um, people were tending to plug in their vehicles at 5 p.m., which also happens to be our system peak because we have people coming home from work, um, you know, turning on appliances, beginning to cook, all of those fun things. Um, and so if everybody came in and charged at 5 o'clock p.m., uh, we would be really adding a lot of extra load to our system peak over the years based on what we're seeing EV adoption uh, projections to be. So this second phase is all about um, better understanding that charging behavior um, by monitoring where, when, and how people charge throughout the day, um, and then leveraging that information to figure out, you know, is, are there ways that we could modify that behavior so we could shift some of this load to um, be coming off the grid at a different time of day, say in the middle of the night, uh, when load tends to be quite low. And then that will help us um, either defer or avoid um, additional infrastructure investment in our electricity system. Now, uh, Jenna, uh, the, these kinds of demand side management programs are being quite popular with, uh, with the utilities. So will uh, this pilot project uh, be set up so that NMAX will have any control over when the, uh, when the vehicles are charging, you know, some kind of, I don't know, automated control, anything like that? So the pilot project um, isn't going to do that at this stage. Simply what's going to happen is we're going to install a geotab device underneath the steering column of the vehicle, and it's going to record where you charge. So are you charging at work? Are you charging at home? Are you charging at um, you know, the mall or downtown in a, on a street parking in a street or a parking lot? Um, and then we're going to take that information and throughout the program, people will be um, given different incentives and different sets of information. And we're going to see how that might change how they choose to charge and when, when and where they choose to charge. So that's what this phase is all about. Um, and then we'll use that information to inform where do we go from here. So right now in Alberta, we don't have time of use rates. Um, and this is just the beginning of a, a you know, conversation with our regulator and the government around what's appropriate policy here in Alberta. Um, I think you might have mentioned earlier, we have 3,000 vehicles on the system today. Um, so it's early days yet for us here in Alberta. But we've got a lot of different jurisdictions we can learn from as well. Um, when, will, uh, when will the project be over? So it's, it's open this week and it's going to run until December of 2022. Okay. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time on social media, Jana, is what are utilities uh, doing to upgrade their infrastructure, whether it be at the community region or the sub, you know, a, re a sub region, something like that. And my, my pat response is that of all the utilities I talk to in North America, my impression is that most are preparing for electric vehicles. They're doing something along these lines. Some are more advanced than others. Fair enough. But everybody's, you know, considering this, they know that additional load is going to be coming. And I assume this is part of NMAX's response to that. Uh, and I think I've talked to um, uh, one of your VPs in the past who said that they had been doing it like back in 1927, uh, sorry, back in 2017. <laughs> so is that fair to say that, you know, your utility is, is uh, gearing up uh, for a, a heavier load with electrification, especially around transportation? Yes, absolutely. So we've seen in the last three years in Calgary, EV adoption increase by 60% each year. So we do expect that we're going to see um, a lot of increased demand on our system related to the electrification of transfer, transportation. And, you know, as the planners of, of the electricity system, it's our job to stay ahead of this, understand what might be coming, figuring out where that might tax our system. And what do we need to do to get ahead of it? And there's lots of other solutions in, in addition to 
how we might um, influence charging behavior to minimize the impact to the grid and maximize the use of the existing system. We are looking at battery storage, you know, at the, at, at the home and how that might um, offset perhaps investments that we'd make in the grid. Um, we at NMAX Energy uh, have a solar program for residential solar. People can go on our website and sign up to participate in that. Again, another opportunity for how people can uh, reduce grid consumption um, by generating electricity right on their own rooftop. We also have a few other exciting pilots um, going on where we're looking at maximizing two-way flow on the power grid, particularly in our downtown network here in Calgary. We have um, a very, very reliable, primarily underground network. Um, but with that reliability comes a few technical challenges around exporting power back onto the grid. So we're working right now um, on a pilot project partnered with um, Cadillac Fairview up at Chinook Mall that has a similar uh, electrical design where we're, we're working to export uh, their, solar, their solar energy onto the grid um, so that we can enable that throughout Calgary. Is uh, there any interest in the near future in, in looking at uh, vehicle to grid uh, storage? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And actually, we are looking at a pilot program in that space as well um, that I think it might actually kick off um, at sometime next year, but don't quote me on that one. Okay. And uh, what about at the neighborhood level, uh, Janet? That, that's a question I often get asked, you know, the, the transformers and, and, uh, and uh, with the wires and so on. Um, does it, NMAX anticipate that it's going to have to do much upgrading at the neighborhood level? Yeah, so one of the things we learned in the first phase of our charge up um, pilot is that um, if you have multiple EVs plug in at system peak at the same time, say around five o'clock, it doesn't take very many to start overloading, possibly overloading the neighborhood transformer. And so that is the first place where we see there could be strain um, in, on the residential system. So all the more reason for us to figure out how we might get that charging to start at a different time of day, especially because what we're seeing is that, you know, people tend to only need around two hours to fully charge um, their battery. Um, but they're staying plugged in, you know, say from 5 p.m. till they leave the next morning. And so if we can shift some of that, uh, we can definitely avoid or defer investment in replacing residential transformers. The other, the other place that some people could see a need to upgrade their infrastructure would be if you're going for uh, like a level two charger that requires uh, a higher level of service in your, say, your garage, um, and you might need to upgrade the feeder that actually comes right into your home in order to give you that level of electricity. Now that's not a requirement to charge an EV, that's just if you want to be able to charge quite a bit faster. Is the is NMAX working with the city of Calgary on on bylaws and and uh, uh, you know to, to assist uh, condominiums, apartment buildings, you know people who don't have uh, maybe a, a parking spot, don't have a garage, and have to leave their vehicle on the street? Uh, is there any progress in, in, on that front? Great question. So we've had some excellent conversations and partnership with the city of Calgary over the years as we've looked to get ahead of this. We also have with the build community here in Calgary. So looking at wherever we can through bylaws, be proactive in what um, the building requirements are. Um, we, in our own design standards, um, have made changes so that if, you, if you're doing a new build today, we're planning ahead in you know, a condo development, for example, to enable a different level of electricity for the growth we see happening with electrification of transportation. I think the bigger challenge will be in retrofitting um, you know, all of the facilities that exist today. And as we see this turnover, this is a place that we're really focusing on uh, with developers um, who are doing those types of projects and with the city as well. We've also worked with the city um, just on their own um, electrification plans for Calgary and looking for every, any place we can partner with them. Um, we actually right now, as part of our first phase of our charge up pilot program, we are helping them with the installation of 20 chargers at uh, different um, City of Calgary buildings here. And, um, and they've got some other neat plans around electrification for our city as well that we're partnering with them on. 
Well, it sounds very exciting, uh, Jana. I mean, since I first did that interview in, in 2017, uh, things have seemed to have come a long way. And now electric vehicles are uh, sort of being adopted quite rapidly. Uh, it seems like a smart thing on behalf on NMAR, NMAX's part to do. So thank you very much for your insights. Really appreciate this. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. And uh, if people want to sign up, get on our website at www.nmax.com slash chargeup.